Okay, Bronte was asking about um, the creation of more complex reflections in Photoshop, for example, puddles. And um, I know how to do that, but it just takes me a second to kind of gather all of the resources and to make sure that the technique really works. So um, to do this, what you need is an image, of course, a background image. I'm just gonna use the one that I was showcasing in class. And then you also need to go online and look for um, a map. So I have been looking for puddle maps. Uh, basically, these are just kind of like uh, grayscale images that have a pattern on them that uh, kind of imitates the puddles in the landscape. These are gonna be flat, like overhead views, and you're gonna need to distort it in Photoshop in order for this to work. But I just kind of like searched around until I could find uh, a texture that I was able to download at a reasonable size and resolution. And this is just gonna kind of depend on what kinds of um, image you're creating. So the one that I ended up going with is this one. Uh, just because I was able to download it at a pretty high quality and I thought it had some good variation between um, the dry and the wet. So dry is the black areas of the, I believe it's the black areas of the image and white is the wet and then all the gray in between is kind of a gradient between dry and wet. Okay, so um, the first thing I would do for creating a reflection is to make sure that I have um, a duplicated image that I can flip upside down. So I'm just going to duplicate my background images and merge them. I've just uh, used Control J to duplicate and Control E to merge those together. And now I have a, an image and I'm going to use uh, Transform Flip Vertical. So now you can see that the whole image is uh, able to be moved up and down. I'm going to set my opacity to 50% just so I can set up the reflection properly. So I'm going to set this um, as a pavement reflection and basically I just want to align it on um, the horizon line uh, so that I am getting kind of like the perfect vertical reflection from the materials above the scene. And then I'm gonna put a layer mask on here and just cut away um, the parts of the reflection that I'm not gonna need. So all of the parts above here. And now this is like a, a perfect reflection. This would be if you had just a flat concrete surface and you wanted to show that it was uniformly wet all over the place, then this might be a good way to show that reflection. But we wanna do something extra, which is to apply a puddle map to this. So I'm going to go to my downloads and bring this uh, puddle map into Photoshop and then just drag it into my image here. And you can see it comes in just as a square like this. Um, and I'm going to just distort this so that it fits over top of my paving area. So I'm gonna use distort and I'm gonna drag it down here to the horizon and just um, kind of move this in so that it makes sense with my paving and drag these edges out so that I have uh, this just this um, puddle map kind of like in the same distorted view as the rest of my drawing. So once I'm kind of satisfied with the placement of this, I'll hit enter. And now what I'm going to do is control click on this layer and use control C to copy it. And then inside this layer mask here, I'm gonna alt click and I'm going to uh, control V paste my layer map. Now it didn't come in exactly in the right area as I expected it to, so I'm just gonna move it around until um, it kind of is about centered like that. And now I'll control D to deselect. And this is just giving me a full preview of what my layer mask looks like right now. So if I turn off the, um, the original map and I turn off uh, the rest of this, what I should see um, if I zoom in on the paving is that there are areas of wet and dry. So areas where the displacement map has actually erased parts of the image. And you can see that over here um, and you can see it, it would be wherever there were uh, dark spots on the, uh, the map that we used. It would be basically 
creating a deletion of the image, whereas um, areas where, which were white before or light gray would allow the image to pass through. So maybe you can see this a bit better if we increase it all the way up to 100%. Now you can see the wet and dry areas a little bit more distinctly. So the puddles are primarily happening along the edges of the view. And what you would need to do is basically just find a displacement map that, um, that you can manipulate according to where you need to have those wet and dry areas. So I suspect that if I inverted this, then I might come up with a completely different result. So let's just try, um, let's just try doing that. So I'm going to uh, control I to invert this layer, which is the map. And then I'm gonna control click on it and alt click on my layer mask here and control V to paste that in. Now it's come up exactly the same way as it did before. So I'm just gonna try control I here. There we go. So I've, I've inverted this so that the white is black and the black is white. And let's see what happens if we go back to our view here and I look at this image now. So what is happening here? It actually doesn't look that different. So I'm kind of curious about how that impacted the layer mask. Um, I would have to investigate that further. Maybe the, the texture isn't contrasted enough for it to have um, an impact. Um, so I guess I would just go back to the way it was before, which is like this. So my overall takeaway from that is that the black areas are needed to create um, places of dryness and the white areas create places of wetness. Okay, so in that, in light of that, that makes a lot of sense um, that the doing it with an inverted um, position actually didn't result in areas of puddles and dryness like I expected because this gray stuff just turned bright white instead. So then in, essentially what we had was an area of wetness with even greater wetness where the puddles are supposed to be. So what then you would need to learn from that is that when you're searching for a map, what you want is something that has a lot of contrast between the um, light and dark. So like maybe you want something even a little bit more extreme, like something like this. Um, I wonder if I could use this and get a good result on the regular layer. Okay, now this is very pixelated because I'm increasing the size a lot, but I'm just doing this as a basic test. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to invert it because the areas of white are where it is dry. So let's control click and control C and then go into our layer mask and control V drag it down into place somewhere around here. And let's see what happens now if we go back. Ah, now we have it. So now um, we have the, the higher the grade of the black and white, the more intense the um, puddles are going to look. So we have uh, puddles that, that work fairly well. Let's just zoom in at 100% and see. It doesn't even really matter that we used a pixelated image because you still get those sort of like faded spots. Um, I would imagine that you could probably create your own puddle texture in black and white on your own square just by using irregular selections and brushes uh, with hard and soft edges to create um, that kind of a texture. So let's just go back to this, invert it again. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. And if I look 
at my view now, you can see the puddles have been reversed. So now the, um, the water is sitting within the white zones and the black zones are the dry areas. So that's how you can use displacement maps in Photoshop to create puddles. And then as long as you have your proper reflected image there, um, you can basically use your layer mask to control uh, what parts of the image are being reflected. So I would just delete that you know, part from here and uh, this part of the reflection from over here. And now we just have puddles sitting on the ground. Um, on our ground plane.